Both the Toyo 83 and the Geolander G015 have been acclaimed for their expert balance of traction capabilities on both rough and smooth trains while maintaining a high degree of comfort. In this episode, we will be dissecting their features, analyzing their performance, and unveiling how they fare against each other. But first, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, and visit CompareTheTire.com to check out all the other comparisons, including this one. The Toy Open Country 83 sports a cutting-edge thread design. At the center, you'll find S-shaped lugs fortified by thick supports underneath, granting the tire its exceptional directional grip. Encircling these are smaller lugs, notable for their all-direction notches and comprehensive depth siping. These lugs are spaced apart by vertical grooves which line the edges of the shoulder blocks. The shoulder lugs, although are spaced apart sufficiently, still held together by strategically positioned ridges or you can say connectors. What's more, a secondary layer of rubber underlies the entire shoulder rib with all lugs mounted on it. This provides the Toyo 83 with impressive lateral stability even at high speeds. Switching gears to the Geolander G015, it features smaller and more tightly packed lugs throughout its design. The thread comprises five ribs, with the central one being slightly narrower and marked by lateral zigzag grooves. Meanwhile, the flanking ribs showcase larger lugs characterized by both lateral and longitudinal slits integrated as groove notches. All of these ribs are held together by longitudinal grooves that run along the exterior setting apart the shoulder blocks. These side lugs create a consistent pattern featuring notches and stepped edges. Though unlike its competitor, the blocks aren't staggered, but you can say each block is still serrated on itself. Dry traction is primarily influenced by two factors, straight and sideways grip, and the Toyo 83 showcases exemplary performance in both these dimensions. The tire's dry traction can be attributed to its unique construction, where you get a central placement of S-shaped lugs of a stiffer composition. These lugs facilitate a more immediate and accurate steering feedback, essentially improving the vehicle's handling characteristics. When subjected to turning forces, the sturdy arrangement of these lugs or blocks maintains their structural integrity, thereby promoting a more uniform and dependable grip dynamics. This contributes to an overall enhancement in the tire's traction capabilities. However, the same performance standard is not met by its competitor, the Yokohama Geolander. So, the Geolander G015 is designed with a more pliant thread optimized for on-road applications with an emphasis on maintaining steady road contact. The lugs of this tire are more susceptible to deformation, a trait that leads to increased energy dissipation. This results in a reduction of energy available for rolling, impacting the tire's overall traction performance negatively. The overall wet road traction is evaluated by analyzing grip and hydroplaning resistance. Starting with the grip, this feature of a tire is determined by the sipes and the thread flexibility. This is due to the fact that sipes function to absorb and consequently remove water from beneath the tire, thereby facilitating effective water clearance. An exemplar in this area is the Yokohama Geolander G015. Its thread showcases a high absorbency and the integration of an interlocking side design significantly improves the tire's efficiency in clearing water. This of course results in enhanced wet road grip. However, the Toyo 83 adopts a different approach with its rigid side design. Due to the inflexibility of these sides, they face increased strain as they struggle to expel water out though the tire does okay when it comes to hydroplaning. Thread wear is primarily dependent on two core factors, the rate at which the tire's rubber undergoes wear and the duration for this wear to become significant. 
A rubber compound that leans towards the softer side tends to wear off more quickly. Nonetheless, if the rubber is thicker, indicating a larger tread depth, the rate of wear could be slower due to the larger volume of rubber that needs to be worn down. But considering the Geolander and the Toyo 83, both tires exhibit equivalent attributes in terms of weight and tread depth across all their respective sizes. So the only variable that sets them apart is the softer compound of the Geolander AT, which predisposes it to faster wear. Furthermore, the more pliant rubber of this tire interacts more strongly with the road surface, requiring additional energy to disengage. Contrarily, the Toyo 83 with its more rigid rubber composition offers less resistance during rolling as all its lugs are kept firmer. And that also explains why this tire gives out better miles per gallons as well. A top-notch tire in this category should offer a quiet ride and absorb road vibrations effectively. Now the Yokohama Geolander, although makes notable compromises on dry roads, this is where it redeems itself. Its superior flexibility when navigating rough surfaces enables it to absorb the energy from vibrations, significantly reducing the impact felt by the driver. Additionally, the tire is exceptional at noise dampening due to its tightly packed tread voids. In contrast, while the Toy Open Country 83 also features ridges between the shoulder lugs that limit air infiltration, its grooves are comparatively wider, and this allows more air to circulate and strike the walls around, creating greater tread noise. So among all other options, the Geolander G015 stands out for offering superior comfort, earning it a spot on our top tire recommendations. Although both all-terrain tires possess three big mountain snowflake rating, indicative of their performance in severe snow conditions, the Geolander G015 still outperforms its counterpart. This superior performance is attributed to the tire's tread design, which is filled with biters that exhibit notable flexibility, enabling them to expand and contract, thereby capturing snow within the grooves more effectively. This phenomenon of snow compacting within the tread grooves enhances overall traction, and the reason behind this lies in the fact that snow sticks more effectively to itself than it does to rubber, thereby allowing compacted snow within the tread to provide additional grip. The Toyo 83 on the other side has less siping in comparison, and although its biters are great for snow, the tire's stiffer tread lacks the needed flexibility and is prone to becoming increasingly rigid in freezing temperatures. So overall, it's a win for Geolander G015 on both icy trains and deep snow. In terms of off-road performance, both tires have different strengths and weaknesses based on the train types. In muddy conditions, both tires exhibit suboptimal performance given the all-terrain design's inherent difficulty in mud expulsion from tread grooves. But still, overall, the Toyo 83 exhibit marginally better traction due to its unique staggered shoulder lugs or traction scoops. The Geolander G015, in contrast, lacks such design elements and its four continuous running ribs obstruct lateral mud removal. In rocky trains, the Toyo 83 again takes the lead where its stiffer bite on rocks can be optimized by reducing tire pressure. This adjustment also improves the tire's footprint, primarily expanding sidewall lugs. Though speaking of which, its sidewalls really need some durability. The Geolander, on the other hand, although it doesn't offer aggressive enough design or sidewall lugs, it's still a relatively tougher tire, an attribute really important for rocky trains. Moreover, the tire also takes the lead on sandy dunes, where its softer rubber provides better flex and yields superior results when aired down to a minimum PSI. So, what do you think? Do tell in the comments. And please don't forget to subscribe. Till next time.